I am the best I am today, but I'm not the best I'll ever be. That not that mo more motivating than to say, I'm going to come in my best and that's it. I'm going to be the best ever. And this is, I work so hard to get to this show and I deserve, I want to be first. And then you're crushed afterwards. It's like, but then you have nothing to work towards. Is bodybuilding about selfies, steroids, magazines, and muscles? How do I become a successful pro bodybuilder or fitness competitor? Where do I even start if I'm new? And the biggest question of all, what are the judges looking for anyway? Even today with the internet, many people first discover bodybuilding by word of mouth. The lack of regulation has caused a boom of unqualified coaches, scattered info, biased advice, dangerous protocols, and posing trends that are a hot mess. After 20 years in the business, I have seen it all. Week after week, I'm going to talk about taboo topics that get swept under the rug, provide you tips and strategies to gain a competitive edge and stand out on stage in any division or federation. I'm going to answer all the burning industry questions without the bias. I have competed across six federations, earned pro status in three, and judged in two. I've coached posing and choreography for men and women in all federations and divisions. I know just how much competing means to you. I'm your host, Michelle Welcome, and you are listening to the Everything Else in Bodybuilding podcast. Be sure to download your free guide, Five Things Every Bodybuilder and Fitness Competitor Needs to Know Before Your Next Show at eeinbb.com. That's www.eeinbb.com. What's up, everybody? Michelle here from the Everything Else in Bodybuilding podcast with my co-host, Basilios Metropolis. For still with week. the co-host thing, though. I don't get it. I'm still trying to work that whole thing out. And we're once again live here, and we're doing our weekly discussions where we talk about topics in and around the bodybuilding industry, and we invite all of our listeners to come to the Everything Else in Bodybuilding podcast insiders group on Facebook and chat with us about all kinds of topics in and around bodybuilding. And today, our topic has to do with how do you even know that you're ready for a show? And I thought that was actually a really interesting topic because you can actually talk about it from a music standpoint, having toured, mm. having created albums, having been on tour. Like, how do you even know you're actually ready? I think it's like, it's not a one answer, one size fits all answer. Yeah, There's a actually a lot of different uh, ways to know whether it really just depends. What, what a great, uh, you know, piece of information to try to put your, wrap your mind around. What, yeah. When do you know you're ready for anything? We talked about PRs last week. We talked about how to get our mind ready. We talked about post-show blues. We talked about different things in and around that. I think this topic is is kind of still relevant to that, like still putting yourself in and around what you should or shouldn't be focused on, setting up with expectations, and moving into those kinds of conversations. So cool, very very interesting. Yeah, and this was compliments of one of our uh, listeners, so I, I wanted to just acknowledge that. And actually, I, again, it is. it really does depend on whether you know you're ready or not. This actually came up in one of my group classes where um, we talk about all kinds of things in my virtual group classes. And there was a, a night where we talked about whether or not doing that show, whether the, like somebody in the group actually felt like they knew they were not going to be physically ready for the show. Mm. And there was somebody else who also knew that they were physically not going to be ready for the show. Mm. But they had two completely different attitudes on what to do about it. So one person knew they were not going to be ready for the show and decided to just do it anyways and know that they're going to pick another show later on and use this show as quote unquote a warm up. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think, again, it, it comes down to the expectations that you set, you know, as, as far as relating it to things that I've done. You hear a lot in, in the music industry, especially when you're starting out, you hear, you know, it's just time to get your feet wet. You should get on stage and, and test the waters and, and feel it out. And if that's what your expectation is, if that's what you're going into it as, knowing that that's what you want to get from what you're going into it with, then go for it. You know what I mean? I actually think that's a really positive attitude because I feel like there's less pressure for that. You almost feel, you almost, I almost feel like they would get to the show and probably have a really great time because they're not attached to the outcome. They're not attached to being perfect, mm. ready or anything. It's mm. more about, okay, I'm going to have a great time, get on stage and I'm going to use this experience as a way to kind of like what we talked about um, in last week's um, what, group gathering where we talked about how if you're going to uh, do a show, make sure you have a goal for right after the show. 
And this is a great thing where yeah. having the goal would be after the show to use what you did on stage, yeah. look at it, okay, yeah. analyze it, and then take that information and get better for the next show. I thought that was a really that was a really good let's thing take, for that. Let's take that a step further, right? So you're talking about, you know, being ready for the next show and, and this question isn't just for beginners. We're we're kind of hitting this particular narrative in and around maybe this being your first show, but what if it's not your first show? Do you know if you're ready or not for the fifth show or the tenth show? Are, are you doing numerous shows? And again, for me, it's, it's really about expectations. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll use the example of, of my, well, what we're currently doing, right? We're, we're currently involved in, in both of our passions here in bodybuilding and, and I'm involved in music and I'm coming back around in my music career. It's been 10 years since I'm doing anything, um, but I'm not, hungry or eager to get on stage even though I'm excited to do it and I know I want to I'm taking my time with it I don't feel like I need to get my feet wet I don't feel like I need to get out there and test the waters I've done I don't know countless amounts of shows so for me my expectation around what I'm trying to do is a little bit different I'm trying to set something up a little bit more in my wheelhouse so that I feel more comfortable and confident for what it is I'm hoping for with the results of what I'm presenting. And so maybe you're a professional bodybuilder, maybe you're, this is your fifth show or your tenth show, maybe you're trying to get your pro car, you got it, you're going up against pros, maybe you want to take a little bit more time. Maybe you know this is lifelong for you, maybe this isn't just a one or two show type thing. You know, you got to think about these different perspectives of where you are in life and what you're hoping to get out of it. And that's actually the attitude of the other person. So I mentioned that there were two different scenarios. Both people were not going to be ready in their minds for the show. And I'm, we were just talking about the person who was using the show as a warm-up, accepted that they physically weren't going to be at their peak, but then just said, you know what, bless and release, I'm going to focus on the show later. However, the other person knew that they didn't feel, she didn't feel that she was actually ready and decided, and the show was actually going to be coming up that weekend. So we were days before the show mm -hmm. and backed out because didn't feel as though the body, her body was going to be in its peak condition and said, you know what, I'm just not going to do the show. I'm going to do, I'm going to pick another show. It's going to be later, more weeks out from this one to give my body more time to bring it down another five-ish pounds. And that's another completely different attitude. And that's healthy too, to just be able to bless and release yeah. once again. Yeah, 100%. I'm not attached to this show. I'm not going to be ready. So I'm just not going to do it at all and wait and do it in a few weeks or maybe another month or two and feel better about the package that I bring to the stage. Because ultimately, in her mind, she's not ready and she wouldn't feel confident because of that versus scenario one. She wasn't ready and she was like, you know what, I don't care. I'm just going to have a great time on stage. Mm. So both confidence levels yeah. really dictated what decision they made. And, and I'll, I'll bring it a step into the, into the world of health physical health and mental health, I think is very important no matter what we're looking at. You know, I, I, I love music. It's a part of my life. It's a part of my expression. I do it for myself first. It's, it's something that fills me up. It's something that my wife here really loves. We spend a lot of time together and you know, there's times where her and I just have intimate moments where we're playing guitar, hanging out, writing music, things like that. I you call know? them living room concerts. <laughs> it, it's, it's healthy for us. It's healthy, but does that mean I'm going to take that same performance and bring it on stage? Hell no, I'm not doing that. You know, like that's a private moment, right? But but so it's like, wrap your mind around what it is you're hoping for in and around what you're trying to seek, right? So yeah. bodybuilding is a lifelong sport. In my opinion, in, in my humble opinion, I've, I'm sponge by osmosis, right? 10 years with this beautiful woman here. So uh, I've now seen a lot. I've been to a lot of shows. I've talked to a lot of competitors, you know, judges. I've been in and around the scene for quite some time, different federations, you know, you name it. Um, so I think... One thing I see a lot of is, is people are eager. People are hungry and eager, and I can respect that. Like, I can get into that. But this, to me, is, is if, if done properly, is lifelong, and it could be very healthy if you look at it from that perspective, including the competition side of things, right? If you're going into it thinking you're going to win it all, do it all, and be your best in the short amount of time, and then what? And we talked about that last week a little bit, right? Exactly. You know, so so weigh the options, write a to-do list, pros and cons, whatever it is that you're, how your brain functions, however you want to create those narratives, but, you know, risk versus reward. What are the benefits, cause and effect 
always, always in everything. I mean, at least when I try to make decisions, or we do anyway, that's, that's what helps us keep moving forward, you know, build better relationships with things. You know, and if we get a little bit more micro into each of the divisions and just kind of segue into uh, the whole, it depends, am I ready or not? It depends on your category. It depends on how lean you need to get for your category. It depends on the federation you're in. If you're in drug tested versus non-drug tested federations, the look is going to be very different. So whether or not you're going to be ready is also going to be determined, is really going to be determined by your body and how whether it's lean enough for the category, if it's full enough for the category, muscle-wise, and that really depends on all of those things. So if I went and just talked about, let's just say bikini, for example, it's so hard to nail bikini because the look is so, it's so subjective and there's not like a little, like it's a little bit, it's almost easier for me as a judge to score a bodybuilder than to go to a bikini division where there's only two poses. I only have two poses to determine whether or not you meet or exceed the, you know, balanced enough, or, you know, are you full but not too full? Mm -hmm. Are you lean but not too lean? Like there's so much that goes into bikini that you really have to know for your physique. It's not a number. So how do I know if I'm ready? I say it in my clinics, my posing clinics. I say that for bikini only, if I was to make a suggestion on whether or not you're ready, I would say what level of leanness do you need to be where your glute and hamstrings are tight. And is it going to hurt what you? What is that going to be? Is it going to hurt you physically to, to be there? If you have to do things outside the norm, you know, maybe take some diuretics or things like that. Like, I don't condone that. I don't think it's a healthy thing. Is it going to be healthy for your mind? What do you do? How far are you willing to push your body and your mind to be ready, right? It's not worth it. It's not worth the risks, in my opinion. But if you're looking to figure out what that would look like for you, it's not a number, it's not a body fat percentage. No judge is walking up on stage with a caliper and grabbing the side of your body and saying, nope, didn't meet the criteria. Body fat percentages are going to look different on every single mm. person. We're built differently. The way we distribute body fat is different. The way we distribute muscle. You know, all of those things are so independent. So what I would say again is what level of conditioning do you need to be at where your glutes and hamstrings are tight? Yeah. That, but I'm assuming that you are, you have the right about a muscle for the category. You're not too muscular or you actually, <laughs> you know, have some muscle too. And, and <laughs> it is still bodybuilding. Let, let's, let's be real. In my opinion, again, this is what we're talking here. We're, we're giving our opinions, but I don't think anybody's really going to know, but you. You know, if you don't feel ready, if you're not confident, mm. if you were looking in the mirror and going, eh, I mean, that's going to come off on stage. People are going to notice that. You're so going to feel that. And that's going to create the whole experience. Your energy, your vibe, what you're doing, how you're doing it, that becomes the day. You bring that into the day. So if your coach is hard on you or you're being hard on yourself or you just don't feel ready or whatever the case is, oh, I don't like this out of the other, you know, then maybe it's not right. Maybe it's not the time. And the opposite side of it, if you feel like, you know, this is the best I've looked, I feel great, I don't care. Like, you know, maybe I don't have exactly everything I wanted or I do or whatever it is, but you got that confidence and you're coming in strong with that, then you know. And nobody can tell you better than you, right? And confidence goes such a long way. And Basilius, you're doing judging now with me as well. And mm. you can. And there's people that I've worked with who have done exceptionally well. I haven't seen them in years. They, they, start, they go on a different journey. They get involved with different people, different coaches and all that. And then they do another show. I remember one time seeing somebody on stage and I'm like, with binoculars joking. And I'm like, <laughs> is that who I think it is? She looks nothing like what happened. She's off on the side of the stage like a potted plant decorating the stage because she's so forgotten. Her energy was so she lacked the confidence. She looks she's looking at everybody else for guidance. Mm. She looks very unsure of herself. That energy in a pro quality physique, OK, made such a difference that she got lost in a very large group of competitors on stage. Mm -hmm. So I actually reached out to her after the show. I was like, what happened? <laughs> what, what, what are you doing? Because I don't know who that was with mother, the bride hair and standing on the side of the stage with a pro level physique. Like, what's going on? We need to chat. So we end up chatting and make a long story short. It was a whole mindset shift in her that needed to happen. And true story, um, fast forward about, I don't know, maybe a few months working with her again and the mindset shifts and changes, she was up on stage and she won everything. 
everything. And again, that was just confidence. So mm. we're, again, we're not saying... Physique was still on point. I, yes, I was just about to yeah. say that. I think I know who you're all, talking about. She didn't all of a sudden... She looks like, good year-round. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is a, a competitor that you've worked with for a long time. So it had nothing yeah. to do with that. It was just so... You can get so lost and forgotten on stage, especially in a category where everybody looks good. You start going up the ranks and you get into the pro stages. Everybody's a champion at that point. So now it comes down to details. Mm. So we we talk about the different divisions. So we just talked about bikini and even um, let's talk about like figure and men's physique because we'll talk about the muscularity divisions in a second. Mm -hmm. But if we just talk about physique, uh, excuse me, men's physique and figure, what's what's considered ready for you? You definitely need to come in lean. And you have to have that V taper, the shoulder to waist rate, like that ripped abs in the men's physique is everything. Mm. So what's ready for you isn't just the physique, it's can you pose it? Can you pose for what exactly they're looking for? And now, now how, talking, much, how much practice have you done? And I want to talk to you about that. Yeah. So, so Vasilius, you've toured for, I mean, I don't know how many years you toured with the band. Mm. And I remember coming and visiting Vasilius in Las Vegas, and I remember you guys, you would, there's a difference between jamming where you guys would hang out and jam on the couch sure. versus I remember coming to the studio. This was like two in the morning, three in the morning. You guys were still practicing, mm. but it was like a legit setup, full per, full setup with like the stage, exact replica of what your stage was going to be like. Mm. Very different than you sitting on the couch, just jamming away, hanging out with your with your other um, sure. guys. So how did you guys know you were ready to now take this production mm. on tour? Yeah, I think that kind of ties into what I was saying earlier. I think it really comes down to our own perspective. You know, I mean, we were working with different people at that time, and I, I believe I do know that the time you were talking about, we were, were blessed to have some people that were in, involved with us to give us a facility to, to use, and, and, you know, our equipment was set up full-blown so that we can kind of get tour-ready, as you would say. And um, in, in those particular environments, it's really about paying your dues, you know, you don't know until you continue to practice. And the only ones that can tell you to who or what or when or how are the ones doing it. So we just kept going. You know, we would run the song, run the song, run the song. Oh, I made a mistake, run it again. Where do we make the mistake? Come back. You know, break it down, take 10 minutes, go over here, you know, reprogram it, remap it, see how that's going to work out. And, and eventually you get into a groove. And you just find that groove where, you know, things... Uh, things feel natural. Things feel. How many feel... times did you practice one song in any like practice session? Well, the goal would be the goal would be to do it once. The yeah. goal the goal would be to, to to come in and do the show, and to be able to nail the show start to finish. And then in in the way that we did it, at least at that particular point, we would run it through one one the whole set one from start to finish one full time. And then if there were pieces of the set or pieces of the songs that we need to go back on and work later, then we would do that. But that was our format. I mean, that, that's not to say that somebody else's format isn't going to translate in different ways. What's going to work best for you? How I, many times a week did you guys practice? Uh, again, I think that just depended on how, how much needed to be worked on and how much time it was going to take to make those differences. Um, you know, let's say we're building a whole new production or a whole new tour or something like that. Obviously, you know, if you're in a different division or you're starting out for the first time or something, mm -hmm. it's going to require some more time and, and some more upfront uh, investment effort towards what you're doing. So, yeah, I mean, at that point, it was every day. You know, I mean, there was no there was no shortage of uh, effort put into it. You know, but as the more polished you got, and the more I mean, you do it repetitively so many times, eventually you get into a groove, and and you start seeing, okay, these are the these are the little troubled spots. These are the things that need changing. These are the things we should focus on and stop. Like we got the eighty percent of the bulk here. Like you know, your mandatory quarter turn to the right, quarter turn to the right. You got it. All right. You know, but but what's going to make you stand out? Like what's going to make you feel different? Is it the routine that you need more work on? Mm -hmm. Is it the song selection that's not quite right? You know, is your walk all, just a little just off just a little bit? Like, what is it that you need to focus on to fine tune? And you do that all the time with your competitors, you know? Yeah, the ones that need the... I actually started a new class on Sundays for, or for this reason because some people would come into my group classes and they wouldn't have any clue how to get in to set up a pose at all. And there's And I don't think it's a good idea to just continue to practice something that you haven't mapped absolutely strategically from head like beginning to end until you've mastered that skill i wouldn't then go on to other things mm. so that's why i started a class on sundays 10:30 eastern 
for mechanics to just go through with people who are brand new to take you through a separate journey than the ones that I have on different days of the week where we work on other things, refinement and how to get better at posing and even movement patterns, all those things. So mm. there is a couple of stages that come along to that. But yeah, yeah so like figure and men's physique, going back to what we were talking about, whether you know you're ready or not, you have to master the mechanics first. And then you are, and especially in men's physique, you're a showman. Like it, you, you have to stand out. There's a, there's like a presentation component, no matter if it's NPC, OCB, you need to be able to perform. Mm. And that's for performance. Did you guys ever talk about performing or did mm. you just kind of do your own thing or? You know, I, again, I think it really comes down to the expectation of what you put out there for goals. Like if you're relating this to bodybuilding, if I'm a, uh, let's say, I, forget about the age group, right? But if I'm in a local band, I'm just starting out, this is maybe a passion of mine, I just want to get my feet wet. So in other words, you're a new competitor, it's the first time you've tried this federation, you're not really hoping to play, so you don't really care too much about it, you just want to get your feet wet and get up there, you know what I mean? Then, then the time and effort put into that could be different. It's all about the, the, the expectation. Now let's take that to the complete opposite spectrum, right? Right. So now, now I'm not in a local band. I've been doing it for 10 plus years. I've joined several different bands. I'm now on an independent label. So when we're touring professionally, we have investment. We have people involved with us. This is a business. We're trying to make money. There's kids involved when you talk about like our members have children and families to support. Well, well, well hang on a second now. Now, now I have to take this a step further. Now I have to really think about my time vested and the effort I want to put into this. This isn't just a just isn't play anymore. You know what I mean? So now you now everything changes. Your expectation towards it, your goals towards it, what you want to put in is what you're going to put out, and, and it's based around a different ecosystem. It's based around a different mentality around what you're hoping to get out of it. So it's the same thing. Now you're a pro competitor. You got your pro card. You want to be Mr. Olympia or Ms. Olympia, whatever it is, right? Like the, the, the ultimate of ultimate, or maybe you want that pro card, you know? Well, then, then you got to really start thinking about like, how much time and effort am I going to put into these particular arenas or habits or you know, just protocols that are going to make and shift the narrative of what's going to make the difference. So when you talk about, like, did you talk about the performance side of it? Well, it just, de absolutely. It depends on, you know, what we were getting ready for and why we were getting ready for it, you know? Mm -hmm. So is it a particular show? I mean, there's some professionals, bodybuilders, who just do, they do posing routines. They show up and just do guest posing routines on stage. So they got, you're telling me they don't practice for that? I mean, they're, they're getting ready for that. I would hope so. I mean, you better be, you know, like, so it, it's the same thing, right? Like if, if we're doing a radio show, well then, yeah, I got to be ready to do the radio show. The time and effort I'm going to put into that is different than, you know, I just want to get my feet wet or I just, I've done a couple shows. I feel good. Well, maybe I need another three or five years. Like, so ready isn't just the physique. It's also the mind. It's also your actual connecting with the fact that on stage you are performing. Mm. You you are absolutely 100% on stage communicating non-verbally and you're you can control how to make me feel by the things that you do on stage and how you present yourself. That's performing. 100%. That's very much performing. Yeah. So whether or not you're ready for men's physique and figure has to do, you definitely want to make sure you master your mechanics. Conditioning is going to be greater than bikini categories. So there's going to be more time to get you that lean. But if we move on to the more muscular categories, mm. women's physique, classic physique, bodybuilding, those type of divisions, and we want to talk about, okay, how do we know if you're ready for those? Those are ones that you have to take even more time to get lean. You have to be, it's a, there's an expectation there that as you move um, up in the categories from bikini to figure to um, bodybuilding or physique or men's physique to classic physique to open bodybuilding, there's going to be a difference in the level of muscularity and the level of conditioning. Mm. So really what it comes down to is more time. So how do you know you're ready? Well, you have to budget enough time to get your body fat that lean and how long it takes you to get there is going to be very independent on you. Where did you start from? Did you, you know, eat like an a-hole all year and then you're like, <laughs> now you got to lose 50 pounds? Yeah. Or did you stay relatively at maintenance and made some changes and now you're it's it's a it's you're going to give yourself ample time but it's not some like torpedo into the show and from what i understand like these divisions that you're talking about these are the divisions that built the backbone of what bodybuilding is and that's that's why i say it's so a life true. it's a lifelong sport these are the these are the people you know the, the people that made a difference and made an impact and influenced the industry to what it is today it was their life it wasn't three years you see these two right. year three year transformations mm -hmm. forget about how they're getting there that's a whole nother topic 
you know, but the reality is like these people, they spent 10 years, 20 years, 30 years of their lives, all their life, you know, dedicated to this thing. And, you know, of course, we're hungry, we're eager, we want to win, we want to do things, but we're not going to stop working. Bodybuilding is, a, is right? a sport of time and patience. <laughs> time, patience, and consistency, and that's probably the most unsexy thing to say because everyone wants to win at their first show, and yeah. maybe you can win at your first show, but also, have you been training for a long period of time? Do you have the muscle? Are you in the right category? All those things. Sure. So all of that matters, too, and yeah, know, even the divisions like wellness, the amount of muscle, that the lower body, the quality yeah. muscle of the lower body it to have that time. size yeah. takes a lot of time. Especially too. if you're a natural athlete, which her and I both are, you know, so it takes even more time for us. And nutrition's on point. Recovery's got to be on point. I mean, it's it's not overwhelming in a negative sense. I embrace the overwhelmingness that comes with this lifestyle. I love it. I love the challenge. I love the puzzle. It's always ongoing. It's an evolution. What's working today may not be working in six months. You know what I mean? The body's always changing or we're aging. We're getting healthier. We're getting stronger or whatever it is. You know, like the body is always moving in a different direction or another. So that's very fascinating, very cool for me. So if you've been doing this for five years or 10 years or 20 years, like, you're going to know if you're ready. Only you're going to be able to tell you that. Um, but but take your time, right? Like, take your time in and around what it is you want to do with there this There will always be shows. We have competitors in their 60s and 70s. Mm. Like, there, you can do this lifelong if you do it right. And if you're wondering about... Um, Okay, so like week of show and whether or not you're ready in that like physique standpoint, I just want to also put out there to not be doing anything drastic or anything you're, but you haven't tested before the week of show. So like, for example, peak week protocols, you don't want to just go into it the week of show and think you're going to do something to your body and that it's going to work. You don't know. So things like adjusting of macronutrients those are things that should be done long before show day yeah. you don't use your peak week to test anything you want to test things long before your show day get your body fit be ready ahead of time then test some things ahead of time so that you know what you're doing the week of show and nothing too drastic and you mentioned diuretics mm. we had dr guillermo escalante on on he's a scientist um a bodybuilder he's he did a peak week protocol um paper with a couple of fellow scientists and even he says you do not need a diuretic if you're ready too many coaches out there are just trying to compensate for you not being ready yeah. by giving you things the week of show that ultimately are going to make you look worse yeah fluid is i mean is what it keeps our heart pumping i, I don't feel like dying right so i mean electrolytes it's, you can overhydrate yeah. i have a competitor in one of my classes who shared to our group that she was given two and a half gallons of water and wow. she's five feet and she was in the hospital. She had to go to the hospital. She was in the, it for four days at the hospital because of overconsumption of water. Like these are real things. You can't be messing around with the, mm. you need people, if you're gonna work with anybody in the bodybuilding industry Definitely. to get ready for a show. Yeah, it's different. You have to vet out your coaches. This is not general before. fitness. This isn't just right. weight loss. You know, this right. is, these are serious. Uh, Somebody who understands human physiology. Yeah, right, right. These are <laughs> serious circumstances to consider, right? You want to make sure that what you're doing is safe for you and, and for and for the people around you, for your loved ones and anyone who's supporting you through the journey and et cetera, et cetera. You know, I want to touch a little bit on, on the federations and the divisions, you know, as far as being ready. And this is my own take. You know, I'm, sure. I'm a little bit new into the sport as far as competing and understanding the, the aspect of that side of it. But I like to think of it the way that it's laid out now today because of the different federations federations because of the multitude of divisions you have so many different choices right so like we have different goals personally but if you're just getting into it start in some some of the the i don't want to say easier but less muscular dense type divisions bikini men's physique right stay in them work there for a little while then maybe bridge your way up into if you want to go a little bit really liking this then go into figure then go into wellness then go into you know a classic or or, or physique and then for physique for women then you got physique for women then you got bodybuilding and and there's a transition to that i see that being for me at least i see that being a road that could be very beneficial for other people to, to kind of take it along as you know as some of the hardcore people like even us though i'm like ah, i want to be a bodybuilder like that's i want to be mr olympia like that's what i want to do you know but the reality is like i don't have 40 years i'm a natural athlete i don't i haven't had the 40 years yet so as of right now i need to put more time in 
So what am I going to do? You know, do I want to compete? Do I want to keep building? If I choose to compete, right, then maybe I want to do men's physique first. Maybe I want to do a little bit a classic or, you know, something not as substantial dense-wise, muscular-wise, maturity-wise in, mus in the muscles themselves that take time and effort, right? Or, or maybe I just want to take my time and, and just do bodybuilding, and I know it's going to take me 10 or 20 years to do that. But either way, it's an expectation that I'm setting myself up for. It's a goal that I've already pre-established, and it's an understanding that this sport is really for anybody at any given stage, as long as you can come into it with the right mentality, keep a healthy mindset around it, keep a healthy body around it, keep your team healthy, you know what I mean? Like, you don't want these, these naysayers and these, uh, just, just, you know, you know? And uh, it could be really fun. It could be really great. I, I think that's, it's an amazing thing. The divisions uh, that, were, that have been, that have come out over the last decade plus, uh, that have allowed so many opportunities in this sport. And there's other federations too that have been around a long time that aren't bodybuilding driven. They're more pageant driven. And that could be really fun. So think about it. You're involved in fitness. You're, you, you, love this, you love to work out, but maybe you don't want to be a bodybuilder. Maybe you don't want to get ripped and shredded and show my pancreas lean. <laughs> like maybe that's not your goal. Maybe you just want to have a really great time on stage, showcase your physique. There's federations for that. There's absolutely yeah. options for you where you can showcase your physique and not have to go crazy dialing in and dieting for something that these federations, there's bodybuilding driven federations, and then there's pageant, fitness pageant-y type federations. Mm. There are absolutely options, and you being ready, let's well, think about it for a second, you being ready for a bodybuilding type federation means that the scoring is gonna be primarily structure. You're gonna either have the structure, you're gonna either have the volume of muscle, the distribution of muscle that they're looking for relative to the category, you're going to be lean for, enough for the category, and those are very precise criteria that they're going to be scoring you on. Now, if you go to federations that are pageant-like, that's like oftentimes tw like 25 percent of your score. How you come in, unless you're in the more muscular divisions, maybe 50 percent. Mm. So we're talking, okay? We're talking between 50 and 75 percent of your score has nothing to do with your physique. Mm. Boom! But your physique better be fitnessy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is that? So what? So maybe you're somebody who wants to be a standout on stage, wants to get up there and be scored in a way that celebrates you and your individuality, not how you meet these this checklist of criteria. It's who are you, and how do you look aesthetically? How did you present yourself? You know, your face, your overall appearance, your posing. The stage presence. How did they? How did you make me feel? Yeah. All. Could you be marketable? Okay. Could could we see you in a magazine? That type of thing. So you could be scored in a way that has nothing to do with very literal structure, and you you fit in these buckets or you don't. So when you're coming into this industry, know that there's options too, and whether you're ready for a bodybuilding show is going to be very different than whether you're ready for a pageanty type show better know how to perform. Yeah, pageant slash fitness. I mean, the, the, yeah, the pageant federa style. Right, the, she's still talking about bodybuilding in general, just different criteria. There's so many different federations WBFF, out there. WBFF, Muscle Mania, yeah. Fitness Universe. Yeah, right, so. You right, know, IPE has divisions. Yeah. Do NBA, your research. IMBA, PNBA Do your has research, divisions. take your time, get involved with the scene. You know, I mean, it, to me, it, it definitely changed my life in a lot of different ways that I didn't anticipate. And it's done nothing but positive. And I think that comes a lot from my wife here has been an amazing support system as I've transitioned into this uh, lifestyle, <laughs> you know, really supporting her. But then adopting it myself and, and making it myself, it's, it's really gotten me to the point where I feel like, man, there's really not a, a top to this thing, you know? You really can not, a, okay, let, let me just back up a little bit here. The, the transformations that I see that, that your clients that you work with, you know, I mean, they come in, some of these people, and they've just, I don't know, I hate to say wilted flower, but like, you know, some of them are just, they have nothing to focus on. They have nothing to, to shoot for. They've been in the same regimented routines for so long. And I mean, they're great people and they're honest people and great families or good friends or this, that, and the other. And But the, there's like, what do you do next? And why are you doing it? And there's no goals. And then all of a sudden, they're picking a show with you. 
and they're posing with you and they're working with us and all of a sudden six months later they're a completely different person not only physically but emotionally mentally sp sometimes spiritually you know i mean we've seen when people you cry see your transformation on yourself and you see where you were and where you and sometimes i'll yeah. do before and afters for my client i'll just show them this is what you look like before it's what you look like now and it, they do, they're on this and their mind is just continuing along in the process they're not thinking about what they looked like when they started they're just so caught up in the now because they're getting their competitors getting ready for shows you know tunnel vision and i show them where they started and they're just shocked yeah and the level of confidence that comes with that evolution and that is something that Again, I think it's time. awesome. I think it's awesome. And then, and then, are you ready? Are you ready for the next step, the next federation, the next division? Are you ready to make some new goals? Maybe you do have a, you want to be an actor. Maybe you want to be a model. Maybe you want to take some Instagram influencer type road to, to marketing some brand or some business. Maybe you're trying to establish right yourself branding. or whatever it is you're trying to do. I mean, this to me is a foundational component. If you're, if you're healthy in your mind and if you're healthy in your body and you have goals to focus on within that realm, which is what we're talking about here, bodybuilding in general. There's ways to focus our goals in and around fitness. I mean, you could take it a step further. You could say Tough Mudders and you could go CrossFit. You can go into all these, you know, cross divisions, if you will, in fitness. But ultimately, we love bodybuilding. Like, that's where we're at. And either way, it's all the same. It's um, Let me ask you a question. Would you, if I told, if so, you want to be ready and you want to be your best. You want to be the best. But Imagine that you do your show and that's the best. Do you really want to be the best that you'll ever be? Like, don't you want room for improvement? Yeah. Because would it, to, to think that you peaked and that that's it for you, yeah. now it's all downhill right. after that, isn't that demotivating? Oh my God. Like, I... Wouldn't you want to have the mindset that at that show that I'm going to be on stage, I'm the best I've ever been. Yeah. But not the best I'll ever be. And, can, and how far Wouldn't can we you, take like, it? Think about that. How far Wouldn't can we you take want it? to feel that? I'm not the best. I am the best I am today, but I'm not the best I'll ever be. That not that mo more motivating than to say, I'm going to come in my best and that's it. I'm going to be the best ever. And this is, I work so hard to get to this show and I deserve, I want to be first. And then you're crushed afterwards. It's like, but then you have nothing to work towards. Yeah. And there's always more to work towards here. Right? Always room for the body's right? always growing. It's always changing. There's always new PRs to hit at the gym. There's always the next show to do or the next division, whether you're a pro or not. And you see pros and professionals and Mr. Olympias. They're still doing it. Now they have careers. They're doing stuff with themselves. They're they're in a different league. They're in a different regimented routine in and around what they're doing and why they're doing it. It ties back to what we were talking about earlier Absolutely. as to having the expectations set and making sure your mind is clear in and around what you're hoping to gain out of this. Some people, it's just a hobby. Some people just want to come in they want to do a couple shows they want to feel better about themselves that's that's awesome there's nothing wrong with that and other times there are people like you know her and i who this is our full-time job this is what we love i won't even call it a job it's just our life this is us living this is us just Absolutely. another day just her and i chatting like we'd be having this chat <laughs> whether we were on camera or not pretty much the same way for the most part talking about divisions talking about who's doing what talking about the next thing and posing this and you know anyway you get the point you know Set up the right mindset, set up the right goals, have a good clear outlet on what you're trying to do. and uh, Know what the category is yeah. looking for. And trust your intuition. Don't be comparing trust yourself it. to everybody else. What is it going to take for you to meet that criteria in the best manner possible? And how can you do it in the safest manner possible? Yeah. I mean, like, it's not rocket science. If you're in a bar at like 3 a.m., it's last call. Everyone's hammered, being stupid. <laughs> Egos are flying. Hey, bad part of the neighborhood. Maybe we'll let us step in there. Yeah, maybe some might about to go down. You, you know, it's probably likely. <laughs> My intuition is telling me, and maybe I shouldn't be here. Maybe it's not the right time. Maybe I should have went home sooner. Maybe I shouldn't have went to the bar to begin with. Like, you know, like it's just intuition. Just use your intuition. You will know when you're ready. You know what I mean? Like it's it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Don't let the noise get in your head. Don't let the outside Except fears. Except if you're a new competitor. You may not know what mm. you're supposed to look like, though, huh? Yeah. Like, yeah. I think a seasoned competitor, you might feel a little bit more confident that you know when you're ready. 
I would. I would know. I would know the look I'm looking for. And I, but if I was but brand I think that new, just let's comes talk with, about them That just comes brand with change, new. right? That just comes with evolution and being involved in anything. And that could be said in any endeavor that you've been involved in. I think because of the clarity that you have in this particular arena, you know, you have uh, clarity around what your desires are, what your hopes are, and what, what you're trying to get out of what you're doing. But yeah, so if you're new... You what know, I would do if I'm brand new, I would spend more time vetting out my coach and making sure that this person is not just some Instagram famous coach mm. with pro cards as their only real like their only what what their background is yeah. it's just pro cards yeah. like I would really make sure and I would get testimony I would uh, ask other competitors that work with that coach about their experience well, well look let's take it a step further we've done quite a few different interviews with quite a few very educated people you know scholars in my opinion Dr. Mike T. Nelson uh, you know Guermo you just uh, Dr. Bill Campbell I mean the list goes on and on and on of people that we've brought on the show specifically to shed light in and around the topics of you know, safety or in and around the topics of myths or who or what or why or how, what is science telling us? And, you know, I do agree having the right support system is very important. Having the right people around you, coaches, family members, friends, but at the same time, don't lean into them if you don't feel it's right. You know, don't feel pressure. Don't feel fear. You know, like if you're, if you're letting fear drive your decision making, in my opinion, you just, you're not going to end up where you hope to be or you're going to be blind in the outcome of what's to come if you don't have clarity around it and you're just kind of following the next thing. Monkey see, monkey do, right? So let me get, let me put it to you like this. I think when people hire a coach, all of a sudden their coach is like put up on a pedestal and whatever their coach says, it's like coach says run, you say how fast. Like you're, you just put everything into the coach's hands. And what I think is very important is that you never forget that you have hired this coach for a service. You are paying that person for a service. That pedestal should just be that trust, but they should not be above you. Mm. They should be right there with you. You are a team. They are not some sort of god or goddess or whatever you want to call it. They are your team, and if you are feeling that something doesn't feel right, you should not be afraid to talk to your coach. And if your coach is basically putting you down or talking to you as if you are beneath them, that's not, that's not a cohesive relationship. That's not a sustainable relationship, healthy relationship, and that's not good for your mind. Yeah. You should never lose your feeling of empowerment. You should never lose your feeling of trusting your own instincts. You should be able to lean into them confidently as well. Yes, You should be able questions. to trust them. And they should feel that... And it should be, you know, back to, to what you were saying. You like that information back should not be some sort of taxing thing to do where you're bugging them. When you, you're when, not bugging when them. When you tie in what you were saying, how do you know when you're ready? We practiced a lot. We performed a lot. Back to what you were saying before. You know, I think, I think like you're... What you're saying now about being able to lean into your coaches, lean into your peers, lean into your support system is, is just as relevant. You know, being able to, like, I trust my wife with everything I am, not just for my love and for my support and for our decisions emotionally and what we're doing here within our existence together, but also from, from an, a nutrition standpoint, a fitness transpoint, a, a, a recovery. She's been Whether in the, he listens to Well, that's a different story. conversation, you know what I mean? We, let's be real here, you know, I mean, she doesn't know everything, you know, but, <laughs> oh, yeah. but you know, everything's always open for debate you know what i'm saying but but the at the end of, king of debate but, <laughs> but at the end of the day <laughs> but I, why but i i do trust her and i do i do lean into her <laughs> knowing you know she does have more time than me she does have 20 plus years in the business she's done more shows than me you know it's i, I hate to see judgment come in and around you know um whether you're male or female or whatever you are in between and oh, one would know more because of that i don't think so man like this woman motivates me. She works just as much as I do or puts in the time and effort just as much as I do. She's just as educated, if not more, in some divisions or another. And I listen. And I lean into that. And I respect that. And I'm grateful for it. So your support system should be the same. It doesn't matter who's around you or why. You'll know it. You, you'll know that feeling. You'll feel it. When we, when we see eye to eye, there's, an, there's a, just a knowing. Like, we just know that, like, yes. Today I'm going to hit that PR. Today it's going to feel great. Let's go for it. All right, you know, babe, like last night wasn't, yeah, we're not feeling too good today. Like, let's take the gym off, man. Recovery's bad. Like, it's not, it's not, we're not feeling it. You know what I mean? And we know that. We trust that. So trust yourself. Trust That's your intuition. That's a great point because trust you your, knew, your, your, your you trusted your, your internal system told you, I'm not recovered enough to go back to the gym. 
you instinctually knew that. So there's there should be that internal conversation that you're constantly having with yourself. And that shouldn't end the minute you hire somebody to help you get for a show. You should still be analyzing. You should still be recording and documenting and communicating everything mm. to your coach. Yeah. So that because, again, it should be a synergistic relationship. You're a partnership. You've hired them for a service. You owe them nothing. You, you, you are hiring them to help you you know, get out of your crazy train head to not mm. overanalyze and overthink and over debate. Yeah. Find balance within <laughs> and yourself trust, and trust, and trust your intuition, outside right? Look find, at you. You got to find, find that, that balance within yourself, meaning emotionally, physically, and, and understand what it is you're hoping to get out of this. Find, find the right people, find the right support systems. We're here. We have this group. We have the podcast as a resource. We're doing that because, well, we this is our life. We love it, you know? So if you have questions, post up in the group, ask us, you know, we're going to guide you. Just FYI, we don't teach the fitness or the nutrition. We don't do that. But like, we'll talk to you about it. But we'll, we'll answer questions. Absolutely. 100%. You're but, not going to find anybody in our group say to you when you ask a question, you should be asking your coach, ask questions. You should be asking questions mm. because you need to educate. I believe education, the more education that, that, you have, the better. That was the point. That was the point. I have point. like four personal exactly. training. And nutrition certification and we're not we're not kind, we're not I'm always looking we're for not trying to sell that right we're, no. we're here because we love it we want to educate we want to give back this sports helped save my life I know it's been a part of your life for 20 plus years I love it you know so we're here to help educate and help guide each other because I'm sure there's a lot that we can learn from you as well if you've been in the business or not or you're just starting or maybe you're fresh in some way maybe you get some piece of information that we don't have and your experiences help us out. we don't Di uh, Diane was talking about how she at her first her first competition she winged it she's glad she did wing it you know she says that she felt it was gratifying and she was exciting like this is the type of conversations this is stuff that we want to hear about from you guys Jennifer you backed out the day before a show because of a bad situation yeah. and you decided to continue your prep to do a show a later show that's wonderful so again those two separate scenarios it depends on what your goal is what you want to achieve how how you're going how good or good not you're how good or not good you're going to feel <laughs> on stage and yeah. if you don't feel ready definitely wait there's yeah. going to be tons of shows but if you but are the stuff we want to talk go to you for it man about. you know yeah. like it, just go for it you'll know yeah absolutely so we're going to continue these uh, every single week we're going to have these conversations we invite you to join in on the conversation at the Everything Else in Bodybuilding Insiders, pod, uh, the podcast group that we have on Facebook. So come join us there if you're not already and open up the dialogue. Like, what were your key takeaways from today's show? What were your experiences like? We'd no. love to hear. And what are some topics that you would also like to hear us conversate about and just have discussions and educate, that type of thing. So we do look forward to seeing you again Thursdays, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in our group. We will be going live and continuing these group gatherings. Do you have anything else to add? No, I, right. I think uh, I'm ready for the next debate. Let's go. <laughs> what else are we testing? All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. We will be here same time, same place next week. Have a great rest awesome. of your day. Take it easy, guys. Bye. See ya. Ever wonder if you are posing correctly for your division? Learn to Pose is dedicated to taking out the guesswork on how to pose for all categories in bodybuilding. Learn five ways you can improve your posing skills in five minutes guaranteed at www.learntopose.com. There are free posing tutorials available for the bikini, figure, and men's physique categories. More on the way for other divisions in bodybuilding. It's free, so go access your free posing tutorial for bikini, figure, or men's physique at learntopose.com.